If you're in slow tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy and a blank. Welcome back. It's time to indulge those warriors' feels once again. A few weeks ago, my all-time favorite Win Clan heartbreaker and resident perpetual grumpy old man, Crowfeather, was picked to be the hashtag warrior of the week, so I couldn't help but indulge in some fan art of the prickly deputy. My first ever warrior's book was Midnight. Right from the start, Crowfeather has always been one of my absolute favorite characters, and I had always wished more of the new prophecy was focused on his perspective and character growth, especially since at the time, I found Crowfeather's problems a lot more engaging than Brambleclaw's. And even when reading The Power of Three for the first time, I was really hoping we'd see more development between Crowfeather and his children. I mean, we didn't know they were his children yet, but uh, I, for one, thought it was pretty obvious and I couldn't wait for the eventual reveal. But, well, I can easily say that none of that really went down how I expected it to, which is fine, I guess, but man, I was ready for Crowfeather to have some awe-inspiring redemption arc where he becomes the cat that StarClan thought he would become in Midnight. Oh, well. Then throughout Omen of the Stars and forward, I was pretty disappointed at the lack of closure for Crowfeather's character, and I honestly wondered if Crowfeather was just going to die unceremoniously off-screen and with all that wasted potential. But... I am so glad to say that the Urns heard my cries of frustration and wrote Crowfeather's Trial. Man, reading that book after all these years was so cathartic. After being a Crowfeather stan, I needed this book and mmm, it was so nice. Crowfeather finally got the character growth and closure he needed and I'm just, oh, I'm so proud of my boy. <laughs> It came a lot later than I would have liked, but the fact that we eventually got there is all that really matters to me at this point. Crowfeather's self-loathing and self-destructive nature have caused him so much pain and misery over the course of the books, and it was great to read a book about how he found the strength to pick himself up through fixing his relationships with the people around him. People who were closest to him and hurt the most by his actions. And not only does Crowfeather become better by opening up to them, but they're able to be better too. It's a good book! Y'all should read it! So of course, with all that being said, I wanted to dedicate this piece not only to Crowfeather, but the growth he's made since his super edition. Crowfeather's relationship with his sons will never be perfect. In fact, Jay Feather outright refused to give Crowfeather his forgiveness, which is also why I love Jay Feather. <laughs> He's such an ass, but if anyone was going to hold one over on Crowfeather, it feels fitting that it would be Jay Feather. And of course, the relationship between Breeze Pelt, Lion Blaze, and Jay Feather will never be friendly. But with everything that's happened, I do like to imagine that the three of them now all begrudgingly get along at gatherings. Lion Blaze and Breeze Pelt in particular, I imagine just trying to one-up each other about how great their kids are. And poor Jay Feather is caught in the crossfire. Crowfeather can now look at all of his sons and feel proud, even if he'll never get to know Lionblaze and Jayfeather like he knows Breezepelt. It's bittersweet, but considering how tense and terrible their relationships were in the past, this is a nice middle ground. Anyway, about the piece itself. After I drew Crowfeather was when I decided to add Lion Jay and Breeze into the picture, so I had to finagle with things a little bit to make it work, but I'm alright with how it turned out. Obviously, if I would have planned the whole composition to begin with, it would have been better. But I'm satisfied with the end result either way. Lion Blaze, Jayfeather, and Breeze Pelt are all done in a more loose style of line art and coloring, since I wanted to keep the focus on Crowfeather. The background is loose as well. Since I'm going to be making use of different fields of focus, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on a nice looking background if I was just going to blur it up. Anyway, this was a fun piece to do, and I hope you all enjoyed listening to me rant about a favorite grump for a little while. Be sure to keep an eye out on the Clandom for more Warrior of the Week art pieces, and I'll see you guys next week. Remember to stay inspired. Hey everyone, welcome to the end of the video, and starting now, I've decided that I will be answering some questions from my patrons. If you'd like to send me a question, be sure to check out my Patreon page for details. And before I answer some of these, I also just want to thank the amazing people who've drawn fan art and sent it in to me. 
all of these pieces I've posted in this video or in videos past just bring a smile to my face and I keep all of them in a big old file and look at them all the time. It's seriously so generous and kind of you all. Thank you so much. Mushroom Queen 20 asked me, if you could choose to kill one character in Warriors, who would it be? Picking one is hard because I want so many characters to die. <laughs> I feel like warriors should constantly be cycling out characters, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Misty Star because she's just so dang old and I feel cheated that she hasn't kicked the bucket yet. Grizzle Teeth asked, what's one video game you can replay over and over and never get bored of? Hmm, I can't help but make a list because I'm constantly playing any and all of these games. Baldur's Gate series, Kingdom Hearts series, Splatoon 2, and The Legend of Zelda series. Thank you guys for your questions, and I'll be covering more next time. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!